North Central Italy, blessed land, mild warm climate, blooming gardens and vineyards of Tuscany, famous Tuscan wines, Florence, Pisa, Siena, Livorno, the names of these cities are known throughout the world. Between them are picturesque villages and settlements scattered across beautiful hills that just beg to be painted on canvas. And the hills themselves seem to have come from the brush of the artist. Tuscany is the birthplace of the ancient and mysterious Etruscans, the birthplace of many artists and cultural figures. It was here in Tuscany that the medieval Renaissance was born, which later became the basis of all European culture. Banking, which has fallen into oblivion after the collapse of the ancient Roman Empire, was also revived here. The Second World War seemed to have spared this blessed region, with all the major battles taking place somewhere in the distance. But the summer of 1944 changed everything. The advancing Anglo-American troops pushed the Germans and the defeated remnants of Mussolini's army to these Tuscan hills and mountains, the foothills of the Alps. In the mountains of Tuscany, a partisan anti-fascist movement was organized behind Hitler's lines. In search of partisans, on August 12, 1944, Hitler's punitive forces descended on the unremarkable Italian village of Santa Anna di Stazema which God had until then protected from all troubles and misfortunes. A unit of the 16th Division Reichsführer SS, named after Himmler, or more precisely the 2nd Battalion of the 35th Regiment of this division, under the command of SS Hauptsturmführer Anton Holler, occupied the village and began to expel all the inhabitants from their homes, driving them at the beginning to the center of the village. The partisans actually sometimes hid in this rather secluded area, located away from the central roads, although neither at that moment nor before that there were no partisans. However, this fact did not bother the Nazi punitive forces at all. They decided to teach the villagers a lesson, using the example to show neighboring villages how dangerous it can be to welcome partisans. Together with the German thugs, a couple of dozen Italian fascists, traitors to their people, also took part in the massacre of the village residents. This once again confirms our thesis that fascists and Nazis were subjects devoid of nationality, who had broken all human ties, even with their own people. People did not understand what they wanted from them, and why they were being driven to the center of the village, and then taken in batches to the local church building to the mill premises and also to nearby barns and stables. At that time, there were 560 residents of all ages in the village, including 107 children and 8 pregnant women. It was a hot, sunny August day. Fruits were ripening on the trees. Birds were singing in the gardens. Flowers pleased the eye with their beauty. But this did not touch the people dressed in gray-green uniforms. The SS men methodically and routinely took people out in small groups and shot them with a machine gun. Some were driven into basements and pelted with grenades. Apparently, it was some kind of entertainment. Far beyond the village, the screams of women and frightened children could be heard. Cows mooed, horses neighed, the animals sensed the misfortune that had befallen everyone. But Hitler's soldiers as if nothing had happened, continued to do their dirty work. In the church of Santa Anna, where about a hundred people had gathered, the first to be killed was the priest, Fiore Menguzo, and then the executioners began firing bursts at everyone in the church. Those residents who managed to escape from the church came under fire from the SS men standing in the churchyard. These monsters tore open the belly of Evelina Buretti who was eight months pregnant, cut open the uterus and killed the screaming child who was born. The youngest of the children, Annie Pardina, was only 20 days old, but this did not affect her terrible fate. The baby was pierced with a bayonet, like some kind of doll. Neither the cries of children nor the pleas of helpless old men and women stopped the hand of the executioners. The benches in the church were broken down and a fire was made, onto which the corpses of the murdered people were dragged and thrown. They forced the survivors to do this terrible work, and then they were finished up. The bloody massacre lasted two hours. 
The unfortunate people did not understand why they were being killed, why they suffered such torment. Children were killed in front of their parents, parents in front of their children. It seemed like the SS men were aliens from another planet who did not have any feelings for people. When the people ran out, the killers turned to the animals. They killed everyone, livestock, dogs, cats, killed them without any reason, just for fun. Having had enough of the sight of blood, the Nazi calmly sat down to dinner amidst the carnage they have caused. After having a hearty lunch, the Nazis set fire to the village and left the crime scene. They acted calmly, confidently, without fuss, as if they were doing everyday work, like some zombies from a horror movie, fascist, ready for any crime. Unfortunately, after the Second World War, only the division commander, a certain Mike Simon, was held accountable for the atrocities committed. All the direct perpetrators of the crime escaped punishment. In general, both Germany and Italy did not publicize this crime for a long time. The general public became aware of it only in the late 80s of the last century. Only in 2004, in the Italian city of La Spezia, a trial in absentia took place of 10 then still alive perpetrators of the crime, privates, sergeants, and an officer. The trial in absentia was due to the fact that Germany refused to hand over the executioners to Italian justice, considering the arguments of the Italian side unsubstantiated. By the way, in Tuscany on August 23, 1944, 11 days after St. Anna in the village of Padul di Fucecchio, another crime was committed. Officers and soldiers of the 26th Panzer Division of the Wehrmacht carried out a massacre, killing 174 people, local residents, among whom were also women and minor children. The monstrous murder was committed in retaliation for the partisans who had previously killed two servicemen of the 26th Division. Without finding the partisans, the Nazi dealt with the civilian population. The same story repeated itself. Only the division commander Edward Kreisman was brought to justice, who received a 10-year prison sentence after the war and died in prison. The rest of the criminals lived happily to a ripe old age. In 2011, an Italian court sentenced 90-year-old criminals still alive to life imprisonment. But Germany again refused to extradite these people. In 2011, an Italian court sentenced 90-year-old criminals still alive to life imprisonment. But Germany, again, refused to extradite these people. In 2008, a feature film by American director Spike Lee was released, The Miracle of Saint Anne, based on documentary evidence. The film, vividly and brilliantly, tells about the crime of the Nazis in Santa Anna. Filming took place directly at the scene of the event. During filming, people who survived the horrors of war Members of the Italian resistance, children of war who saw with their own eyes the atrocities of the Nazis, came to St. Anna. People cried and thanked the director and actors for telling younger generations about those terrible years.